and Michael, and good morning, my worldwide spiritual family. You know, these love streams remind me of those family reunions where you, you meet cousins and people that you have heard of or have known of but have never actually met in person. And I feel that way on a, on a Sunday morning in our live stream, that all over the world I'm meeting cousins and relatives and people who affect my life and who hopefully is their lives I can affect in a, in a family reunion that is just redolent with love and good wishes and the energy of being together in what spiritual coach Deepak Chopra calls a Sangha, a spiritual community that just en encircles the entire globe. You know, author John Shea, in his book The Legend of the Bells and Other Tales, tells the story of a woman who went into a marketplace and she saw a kiosk in the market that said, God's fruit stand. And she said to herself, ah, oh, I'm God at last. I wondered when they would come up with that. So she wanders into the fruit stand and she, she says, let me have a perfect peach, a perfect cantaloupe, a perfect bunch of bananas, and a crate of perfect strawberries. Well, it's God himself behind the counter. And he says, I'm so sorry, lady. I only sell seeds. Friends, when you go into mind, into the realm of spirit, seeking perfection, remember that it is already there, but it is in the form of the seeds of perfection that God has bestowed upon all of us. We all have within us the seeds which lead to the fullness of life, but we have to set our priorities and work towards them. And I guess this time of uh, introspection and of being inside is a time when we can again revisit our priorities and, and decide for ourselves what's really important in our lives and in our affairs. Henry David Thoreau, the American essayist, poet, and philosopher said, and I quote, let us spend one day as deliberately as nature and not be thrown off track by every nutshell and mosquito's wing that falls on the rails. End of that quote. I love that. Every nutshell and mosquito's wing that just happens to get in the way. Let us not be thrown off by that. Let us keep our focus on our reason for being and on the truth of who we are, God's perfect expressions, carrying within us the seed of perfection, of love and of joy. So friends, it is vital to our wholeness and our success that we clarify what is really important in our lives and affairs. And this unprecedented time in human history is providing us with the perfect opportunity to do that. The story is told in Luke chapter 9, verse 61. I love this story, that a man decided to follow Jesus and he said, just give me a moment to go home and say goodbye to my family. And Jesus said something which I've always considered to be a bit strange. He said, if you put your hand to the plow and look back, you are not fit for the kingdom of heaven. And I thought, what a harsh thing to say to somebody who wants to follow the master, but said, just give me a little time to, to go and put my affairs in order. But you know, if you talk to a farmer, we just had a farmer's market um, earlier uh, last week, and I tried to get in, but it was, the, the, the traffic was just bumper to bumper to get there. And then when you got there, you had to be in a line, of course, waiting with the obligatory six feet between you and the person in front of you and the person behind you. So I didn't actually go. But you know, if you talk to a farmer, he will tell you that if you want to plow a straight furrow, you can't look to the left or to the right, and worse yet, you can't look behind you. Because if you do, you find yourself zigzagging all over the field. And so what Jesus, the master teacher, was saying was, when you set your intention, you have to keep your eye on the goal, on what it is you wish to achieve. And so this brings me to your assignment. Your assignment, and I think Reverend Michael in introducing me promised you that I would give you one. Your assignment is inspired by Reverend Michael Record's lovely poem, To Do Today, which I believe he shared with you in the beginning. But let me repeat it for you. To do today. End a quarrel. Write a letter. Tell P sorry. Help a beggar. Keep that promise, give a smile. Say I love you, walk a mile. Rake the driveway, 
own my wrong, renew a friendship, sing a song. Forgive my neighbor, buy a flower, order in lunch, take things slower. Get home early, call my dad, walk in garden, thank you God. And so friends, your assignment, your mission, should you decide to undertake it this week, is to revisit your goals and ask yourself, what is it that you want to do? What are your original and most important intents and purpose when this season of dormancy is over? And in fact, you don't have to wait for the season to be over to start reliving and re revitalizing and re-energizing your goals. You can start doing that today. So ask yourself, what is your first priority? Not your husband's or wife's, not your children's priorities for you or your best friend. What is your priority for yourself, my friends? Write down that priority and see if you can identify the values that support it. For example, one of my priorities is the spread of truth and the involvement of you all in this ministry known as the Temple of Light, Center for Spiritual Living, the Ministry of Science of Mind and Spirit. And the value that I think drives my intent is a, di a deep belief in the importance and sacredness of community. I think that is so important. And our thriving ministry council here at the Temple of Light has spearheaded what we're calling a love circle, where we call each other just to say hello and to and to offer support and encouragement and words of, of wholeness and, and goodwill to each other. And so this has been really an important part of our keeping together as a community during this time of social separation. And I'd like to recommend that you might do the same. If you, if you think of someone that you haven't spoken to for a long time, give them a ring. Invite them to watch our love stream on a Sunday morning at 9 o'clock with you and perhaps afterwards to share what you have learned, what was your takeaway from the message, and keep that circle of love growing and glowing uh, in, your, in your homes and in your hearts and in your associations. You know, my friends, all of us want to be happy, fulfilled and successful in life, to express love without obstruction, and to live lives from God's highest possibilities, to really nurture those seeds that, that are within us. But to do this, we have to remember that we must stay focused on the goal. As someone said once to me, and I quote, when I'm up to my backside in alligators, it's hard to remember that my original intention was to drain the swamp. So we need to keep our minds on the original intention and not forget why we're here and what we are here to do. Let me give you three steps to getting your priorities straight. The first step I want to share is living in the now, living in the present. Live in the present moment. Every morning on awakening, ask yourself, what are my priorities today? And there's an interesting exercise you can do. Just observe for yourself this week how you get out of bed, how you wake up. Are you one of those people that just jump up and head for the bathroom? Are you one of those that sit on the side of the bed and gather your thoughts for a few moments? Or do you lie in bed, although you're awake and stretch? And what songs do you make? Do you groan? Do you sigh? Do you say like some people, oh God, morning. Good God, it's morning. And other people say, good morning, God, to greet the day. So watch yourself and how you begin your day. Because how you begin your day sets the tone for the entire day, believe me. So, First thing in the morning, I, I usually say to people, I make up my bed and I make up my mind. And often if I don't have time to make up the bed or I, I'm not bothered to do that, I am sure to make up my mind about what kind of day I want to have. And one of the things that one must do is fill your consciousness, ask God to fill your consciousness with every idea you need. So just, just as you are waking up, say, what can I bring to life today? What is mine to do? Ask God, just say, Father, Mother of the universe, what is mine to do today to make life worthwhile for myself, for my loved ones, and for the whole world? 
You know, my friends, order is heaven's first law. So don't clutter your thoughts with business that is not current or congruent with your values and with your, and with your objectives for the day. Pause frequently during your day and say, I know you're here for me, God, and I am here for you. I know you are here for me, God. And I am here for you. So live that in every single moment and just keep reminding yourself throughout the day that you are a co-creator with that presence and power that knows no obstacles at all. And that if, when you set your intention, the entire universe moves to support you in what you intend to do and to accomplish. The second idea I want to share with you in accomplishing your, your, your intent and, and to getting your priorities straight is to simplify your life. And this time has really taught me that, that all the things I thought were important don't necessarily matter all that much. Use the metaphysical KISS method, K-I-S-S. Keep it spiritually simple. Dr. Ernest Holmes, the founder of our great teaching known as the Science of Mind and Spirit, writes, and I quote, if one would take time once a day at least to let go of all that is not true and lay hold of reality, one's mental congestion would be healed. End of that quote. My friends, you can choose to give your energy only to those ideas that support your original intent. You can choose not to flood your consciousness with the COVID panic and fear that is, is just rampant and threatening to overwhelm all of us and feast instead on the truth that you have the seeds of perfection within you and that life wants you to succeed if you just set your priorities and keep your eye focused on the goals that you have for yourself. Uh, uh, one of the Temple of Light members just posted on our Facebook page a lovely uh, tribute to Ernest Holmes' book uh, this thing called you. And she said, it's been a lifesaver in this time. So choose an inspiring piece of spiritual literature and spend an hour reading every day. And if you, sometimes you have books, at least I do, that you, you, you think I'll get around to reading them. Now is a good time to do that. And also choose a passage from the Bible and just read it for yourself every day. You will find it brings you great comfort. So first, I want you to live in the now. Second, simplify your life, clear out the clutter. And thirdly, do not, and I want to repeat this, do not be moved by appearances. You know, it's, it's so easy to get, to get sidetracked and knocked off of our, our intent by what seems to be happening out there in the world. We have problems because we don't get the priorities straight or we get caught up in the so-called facts. Let me give you an example. Perhaps you are one of the many people who have been laid off because of the, the, the current pandemic. But you are not dismayed because you have been listening to the live stream on the Temple of Light and you know that their outer appearances are not necessarily uh, going to affect you in the way that you don't want. If you just keep your focus on what is true about you, that God is your source, not the job that you have been laid off from. And you have an idea to start a new business, but you are in the line at the bank here in Jamaica. Um, they're only letting in 10 people at a time. So you're standing in the line outside and there, there is an obligatory distance between you. And there are two people in the line ahead of you. And they're talking through their masks, so they're talking really loud. You can't help hearing them. And one is saying, why we start the economy gone to hell. And the other one is agreeing. And other people in the line too with their masks on are nodding, you know. And you think, oh yes, that's true. Mind you, they're not talking to you, but you can't help hearing them and you begin to absorb this negative, this shadow, this dark feeling that, you know, things are not well. And the one who starts in the conversation says, why, as we say in Jamaica, this are not my time to start my business, you know. Wow, you can just feel your, your emotions deflating and your energy and your enthusiasm waning. Don't let it affect you. Reaffirm immediately, God is my source 
and within me are the seeds of God's perfection. So I will know what to do and when to do it and how to do it. This is very important, my friends. And I want to just quote you from Ralph Waldo Emerson, the American essayist, essayist, lecturer and philosopher and poet who led the transcendentalist movement in the mid 19th century in America. Uh, Emerson said, and I quote, our globe as seen by God is a transparent law, not a mass of facts. The law dissolves the facts and holds them fluid. The law dissolves the facts and holds them fluid, unquote. You know, once upon a time it was a fact that the, that the world was flat. So facts change. And you see, appearances come and go. But only the truth, my friends, is eternal and brings success, happiness, and fulfillment. Deepak Chopra, whom I mentioned earlier, gives this powerful affirmation, and I quote, I am the pure awareness in which all appearances arise and subside. Just play the observer, the observer role. You are the pure awareness of God, and you're just observing all, all circumstances arising and subsiding. Everything comes to pass, and only truth endures forever. At the University of Tower Street, which is my pet name for the adult correctional facility for men here in Kingston, where for the past seven years, Reverend Michael Record and I have conducted a 12-week class titled Change Your Thinking, Change Your Life. One of the participants expressed his intention to begin pig farming upon his release from prison and to use the, the earnings from that business to hold classes for the youth, to mentor youth in his district, classes similar to the one that we were doing with them. Well, that's a very noble intent, isn't it? And the class was all nodding their approval, except for one cynical young man who said, huh, you're going to, write, you're going to raise pigs, eh? Well, I was turned on for parole three times, and you are a lifer. Where are you going to raise the pig? I mean, you said, you could just see the participant who had expressed this desire to have a pig farm and to use the earnings to help the youth to avoid getting into the same, the same situation that he was in. You could see him just becoming deflated. And so I focused the class. I said, let us applaud his intent to help the youth when he gets out. Mark, here you know, he's on life. Well, my friends, we always say, with God, just, just remember this and hold this in your heart, with God, all things are possible. Well, you know, two weeks later, he bounces into class. And what do you think has happened? Out of the blue, as we say, for no apparent reason, he didn't apply for it. He's on a life sentence. He was summoned to the parole board and given his freedom. Now, we don't know how that happens. We don't even want to speculate. But that is a true story. And it has happened in several classes that we have had, where people unexpectedly having set their intention for their lives and have, having determined their life's purpose, find that the universe has moved to validate their, their intentions and their purpose and to make it happen. So my friends, we in the New Thought Movement have a teaching which keeps us centered in the knowledge that movement and change lead to a greater awareness and a greater expansion of ourselves. Uh, it, it's just such an important thing for us to remember that we are part of the creation of a paradigm based on spiritual principles. And that principle is that God is the only presence, the only power. There is nothing but God. There is no power that can, is opposed to God. Just hold close to that certain assurance that God is at the center and that God has endowed us with the seeds of perfection. And all we need to do is to nurture those seeds by setting our priorities and keeping our eye focused on our goals. So now is the time to get, is the time that we want to keep our, our eyes single, as it says in the Bible, and not get caught up in appearances. You and I are being invited to accept a very important assignment as the midwives who will encourage and facilitate the birth of a new way of life, a new way of thinking, a new way of relating, and a new way of being. 
in the world. People have been talking about the new norm. The new norm is love. The new norm is deeper caring for the human condition. The new norm is holding hands, however, albeit virtually, across the expanses of this world, saying, I validate you, I love you, I appreciate you, I lift you up, my brother, my sister, my spiritual sangha, my spiritual family. I support you in all that you do and all that you wish to accomplish. And so in addition to giving you an assignment, which I always do, I've given myself an assignment this week. If you are celebrating a birthday this month, please post your date in May on your our Facebook page. And I'm going to do a treatment for you now, which is your birthday blessing for the month for everybody who's celebrating a birthday in May. But in addition, every morning on awakening, when I'm doing my personal prayer work, I will pray for those names that appear on that date so that every morning your birthday will be acknowledged and the universe will be told that the seeds of perfection within you are growing to the honor and glory of God. So for your birthday blessing, would you please just put your hand on your heart right now and tune in to this amazing energy we call love. Love right there burning, beating at the center of your being. Right there beneath your palm is the bridge to God where the seeds of perfection have been sown with such love. And so I know for those celebrating a birthday this month that God is their experience. God is the way of their heart and the heart of their way. I know that each person celebrating a birthday this month sets their priorities straight and that priority has God at the very center and that the universe is moving to support their deepest and dearest desires. I know for those celebrating a birthday this month that from the center of their being to the circumference of their conscious awareness, they live, move, and manifest life in a victorious state of fulfillment to the honor and glory of God. And so the universe says, happy birthday. And we at the Temple of Life Center for Spiritual Living say, happy birthday. And all of life says, we are so glad you came. We're so glad you answered the call to be here at this special time in the history of humankind. God bless you, God loves you, and so do we all. And we give thanks that this is truly so, and so it is.